Thanks again for joining us for the second session here uh, about properties, bills of material, and counterpart integrations with SOLIDWORKS at the West Michigan Lakeshore SOLIDWORKS User Group. I gotta say that for the YouTube video. I think we left off about here, give or take. There is my note about not talking about bombs in the airport. Makes things exciting all the time. The next part that we're gonna move into here is how we actually are going to utilize the data, the software, and through the ERP system. And this is kind of a typical workflow of what a lot of people do today in a non-integrated ERP system from a manual standpoint. We make the 3D model, we make the 2D drawing, we add the bill of material to the drawing. And as we cover, the bill of material extracts a lot of the intelligence out of the 3D models and adds it to the drawing. Um, or, we, or we can now today in SOLIDWORKS add a bomb inside the 3D model, but we modify the bomb if we need to. Usually there's a loop back through here. We export the bomb or enter it in by hand or import the bomb into ERP or enter it in by hand or something like that. And this is a pretty simple case. There's more complex situations. We have like a bomb and it has 10 items you put into your ERP system. And then through no fault of your own, most of the time something changes and you need to add 11 items or take an item away or move quantities. And then you have to manually, again, justify the bill material, type it in, segment it out, parse it out, move it over, do all kinds of manual monkey work that's prone to error and isn't integrated or intuitive. In counterpart, we have a direct sync method. So you'd make the 3D model, you sync it to ERP and do everything that you need to do in an integrated environment. And we can look at that here a minute. So here is a, we'll do all this from the 3D model, which is really an important note here that you don't necessarily need a drawing to do what we're about to show you, which is the really good part. So here, this item is not synced into counterpart. If we go here and look for it, this is just basically a quick summary of what we had been doing. And we look for the DGF-03. It doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because whatever I want here was entered in as the bill material display option. So I'm gonna go back here and change this from whatever I want, which was the user specified name, back to the document name. And this should justify our records here. So this is now back to the original document name. And then here, if we click the sync item, or to sync that record, back in counterpart, if we perform another search for this, we'll see that that item now has instantly been synced into the system. I don't have to enter anything or type anything. So where traditionally you may have been entering in, exporting and importing this item, or this bomb structure, Counterpart has done this automatically at no work on any one side and 100% um, accurate. There's no deviation of import, export errors, or hand, types, hand typing or anything. Likewise, at the assembly level here, if we sync that back into Counterpart, if I go to parents, there are none because I pulled up the record before I synced its parent. But now if I hit refresh, it now has a parent. So I can browse to that parent as well. So when we started the demo in this presentation, but even in the last session, none of these records existed in counterpart. And now with a few clicks and I don't know, a matter of a couple minutes, we have a full indented bill of material showing all of the items, their images, their properties, and their relation of parents and children through the bill of material records in counterpart. Now that's pretty cool. It saves a lot of time. It's a very accurate record. It doesn't take anybody any effort or work to do that outside of their normal SOLIDWORKS design day. But this doesn't get things made, right? You can't just tell purchasing all of the data is in counterpart, go buy some stuff. But you can't tell machining all of the stuff is in counterpart now, go make me a bunch of parts. We have another step where we have to connect our SOLIDWORKS design, which has now been effectively synced and moved over into counterpart, connected that to a job. And I think I have that. Woohoo, I do. So to go over the structure, we have the SOLIDWORKS add-in that communicates the SOLIDWORKS file into the counterpart database. Uh, if we have time and if there's any interest, we can start talking about PDM integration. But for right now, we can kind of ignore the PDM part. 
And then from the solid or this counterpart database that got its data from the counterpart add-in, which integrates with SolidWorks, we have the counterpart desktop application. So everything in the counterpart desktop application here, why am I blind? Here, everything in this counterpart desktop application contains all of these functions and a bunch more, and it gets a lot of its primary SOLIDWORKS data from the add-in here. So as good as your SOLIDWORKS is and as good as your data is, which we have a bunch of settings and we can regulate and make sure that we get population, is this desktop data. So in SOLIDWORKS, we're going to now create the allocation between the SOLIDWORKS model, which again has all the bill materials and properties and all the other connected bits of data that we talked about so far. We're going to connect that to an active job, a customer job, something we're building. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of people here are build to print type or design and build to print type environment, whether it's internal or external. So back to PowerPoint here. And this is what the data structure looks like. We'll kind of talk through this before we show it in SOLIDWORKS. We have the SOLIDWORKS file data, and we'll kind of ignore the PDM side for right now, which communicates to the SOLIDWORKS add-in. The SOLIDWORKS add-in can communicate to the counterpart job allocation in the desktop application, which can then manage purchase orders, inventory, and work orders. The first step of that is the engineer specifying what from this model they want on a job. So again, it's not good enough just to draw it. It's not good enough to have drawings. It's not good enough to have that data in counterpart. We need that data in counterpart specific for a job, due date, quantity, et cetera. So when I click on the order tab here, I'm gonna create what we have deemed a engineering order. This is basically me as an engineer and placing an order for a particular job. And I have a bunch of random jobs in here. Uh, we'll pick the mountaintop distilleries job. Maybe I have a better job. What does Starbucks give me? Ah, Starbucks will work. So we'll pick Starbucks. Um, demo database, I kind of often forget what jobs I have in there. So we're pretty much connect, making the connection now. This assembly that I have on the screen that's in SOLIDWORKS that we synced into Counterpart, I want on the Starbucks job, here's the description as presented, I want quantity one, this could be quantity two, right? And this is part of the challenge where just having the data isn't good enough. We need to establish a connection between the data and the job of what we're trying to do. Order categories is not really in the scope of today's discussion, but it's an organizational tool and method that we have in Counterpart. The date that it's due, now notice it automatically gave me a due date of 921. I didn't have to type it in or pick it. That's also driven from inside the software. So like a project manager would pick due dates and then everybody else kind of works and lives by them. Engineering isn't making this up on the fly. And when I go next, we'll see that we're referencing the full bill of material for the placement of this order. Because as we talked about in the first session, this assembly is a sum of its components. If this assembly had no parts, had no children, had no data, it wouldn't exist. The assembly is defined by all of the items that make it up at the varying quantities. So this subassembly is created by these components. And then this subassembly by those components and this parent assembly by these subassemblies, so on and so forth. From here, the really clever thing is let's pretend the customer has it signed off on this nest. So they haven't approved it. I don't know what material to make. I don't know what the tolerances are, but that's the rough prototype. So the bill material says I need quantity one. On the right-hand side is a quantity that I'm going to order or allocate or assign or release to manufacturing. There's a bunch of fun industry terms for this particular job. So maybe I say quantity zero. The important thing to know here is that I am not necessarily modifying the bill of material. It's not like I took Excel and I exported and I deleted a line out and then gave that Excel to somebody in the company to get made. The bill of material still recognizes I need one of these. SOLIDWORKS still says I need one of them. But I'm just directing counterpart as an integrated ERP purchasing manufacturing system to not release any of that to manufacturing, to not manage that at all. Um, we recognize it's there, it's just quantity zero. So maybe that's okay to build, maybe that's okay to build, um, maybe that's okay to build, and maybe that's okay to build, but let's pretend that we don't want some of these McMaster items, we're unsure yet. Uh, the slide is what I'm looking for. So I'm not gonna order the slide, I'm not gonna order this eyebolt, 
and I'm not going to order some of these washers and bushings. And again, when I say order, it's me as the engineer specifying to the company through purchasing, through manufacturing, whatever it might be, these items we need for the job or don't need for the job. I'm not modifying the bill material. I'm not actually placing a purchase order. I'm not actually telling machining that you need to make this part. I'm just creating the demand or the allocation for the job, the release to manufacturing. And you know maybe some of these items, I don't need a spring right now, or we're not sure if that spring is gonna be strong enough, and we think those bumpers will work, but maybe they'll mar a table. We're still waiting for the customer. And this is a real situation. Um, when I was the designer and making equipment, we would call it like a partial bill material release or a long lead time item release, where I don't have the design done, but I need to get the frame or the plate or the fixture or the long lead time electrical actuator or something like that coming while I continue working on my design. And right now, managing that incremental release, those different, that bill that's hacked apart or different items is a very difficult thing to do by hand. I'm guessing most of us in here do this in some way and most of us see mistakes and most of us don't like it and most of us are frustrated with the manual process of this type of um, ordering process or ordering methods, assuming you don't have counterpart. Is that fair? Is everybody quasi frustrated with all that? Well, good thing you're in this presentation. And I really like starting with the bills of material and the property descriptions because now we really have a good foundation of how all this integration is working. So all the things we've done to date are on the create tab. Now we're on the order tab. So who here has like a bot or who here is like an active designer? I sit in front of CAD and I design things for a good part of my job. Is that like 50% of us? Figure. Quarter, right? Quarter, sure. And I mean like you're the boss, right? So you, you go to the people that design for a good part of their job, and what are the two questions you usually ask those people? Are you done yet? <laughs> yep, so are you done yet? Um, a variation of that is probably, you know, how is the design coming, or what does the design look like, or assuming he knows you're not done yet, or the due date's not ready, yep. But it's usually a, a status check on the design. And then the second question you ask is? How much? Well, sometimes. Um, but, but more commonly, the second question is, what have you released already? What's, what's already being built? What's already on the floor? Because you understand that the whole design isn't done before you release it. You also understand that you need to keep designing. So SolidWorks answers the design question very well. As a designer, this is how the design is coming. And SolidWorks is a fantastic tool for that. And as the boss, I'm sure that you recognize that. And, and this, the, you know, pictures are a thousand words. But when you ask, you know, what's on order, the order that I just placed, the partial order I just placed, is a very difficult thing to communicate. I would have to say, like, none of this nest fixturing and some of these some of these other components, but not the slide. You know, there's some McMaster items that aren't, but we can get those next day, so don't worry about that. But that other thing is going to take a while, so we kind of need an answer. It's a difficult thing to work through. In counterpart, um, well, and I guess let me quick jump over here a minute, and I'll kind of show you this. In the counterpart desktop application, this is the assembly that we ordered. Now notice it has four sub-assemblies, does not have that nest sub-assembly. So from a purchasing, procurement, a, uh, manufacturing, like the department and the company that actually gets things made, they're not even seen, they don't have visibility to that assembly that we said we didn't want. Right, there is no, there, that nest fixture assembly just isn't here. And likewise, it's in the bill of material, if I jump to it a minute. If I go look at the record, I can see here that the bill of material has five sub-assemblies and two children that are not in my order request. So when I process my order request, I'm going to buy everything or make everything, I'll pull from inventory everything the engineer asked for. Nothing they didn't, but I can still see the full record all without having SolidWorks. It's really clever. But further, as the boss, you say, how's the design coming? You see how the design is coming. And then you say, what have you ordered so far, right? And what do you get now, like Excel sheets, or you pull up your ERP system, or you basically look at rows of data like a phone book, and somehow that's supposed to be helpful. In SolidWorks, and I've, I've had the boss do that to me, so I'm speaking from personal experience here, right? So from uh, inside of SolidWorks, with the counterpart add-in, because counterpart knows what the bill is, knows the design, and knows what's on order for that machine, I can right click and say show ordered. And we'll have to wait a little bit because it's a bigger assembly than I usually demo with and my laptop's unusually slow right now for some reason. But magic. 
we can dynamically modify the 3D model as presented to the user on what's order. And it's an accurate representation. The nest is not there, the slide is not there, the eye bolts and the bushings are not there, the spring is not there, the feet are not there, but everything else is. So in Counterpart connected with SolidWorks, you can do a picture's worth a thousand words and you can give your boss the really quick, easy answer. Look on my screen, that's what's on order. Now, you know, go to the next guy, right? Because honestly, we all just try to get rid of our bosses as quickly as possible. It's just, you know, facts. So inverted, I can also say show missing. So maybe they ordered everything but three items in this instance, right? These are the th things that are not on order. Maybe that's a much better picture. I need, I can take a screenshot of this, send it to the customer and say, this machine is gonna be late unless you give me an answer on these components today because I need to know what feet won't mar your table. I need to know what spring to put size in. I need to know if you're gonna accept a McMaster car slide or if I need to find a THK slide. I need to know the tolerances on the nest. All of this is exceptionally helpful for department, customer, and everything else communication, all integrated inside of SOLIDWORKS through counterpart. Sir. Um, just a question. So this potentially eliminates the bosses from having to ask you that question. They could have just opened up counterpart. And now you're stealing my thunder, but oh. yeah, 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 we can get there, right? So uh, excellent question, right? Um, so from the boss standpoint, I can go here to the, <laughs> which I was at Starbucks, and I can see, look, here's an assembly that Andrew drew for the Starbucks job. Even without seeing anything in SOLIDWORKS, it tells me already I have zero complete assemblies of the one assembly. I don't know if you guys can all see that. Zero complete assemblies of the one assembly that I have. And I can expand that and I can visually see without SOLIDWORKS on my computer, without anything, this is grayed out as not order at zero of one. These are all zero. And those are zero. This is zero of one because those items are missing, but everything else is a full and complete quantity. So I can run reports, I can visually browse, I can look at all of this data which shows me the full SOLIDWORKS bill of material and shows me of that bill of material what is on order for that job, what is not on order for that job, all in an integrated um, ERP system with SOLIDWORKS. I mean, it gets better, but I mean, we need you guys to catch your breath a little bit and understand really, you know, Look, it's awesome. Any questions or comments on that? Can you segregate uh, from the bill of material purchased items and main details? Yeah. <coughs> that was weird. Yes, absolutely. So in counterpart from a purchasing standpoint, one of the things that we do in counterpart is we have per detail, we specify what it is. So this is a type of purchase commodity. This is a type of detail, and this is an assembly. So when I am processing that in counterpart from a purchasing standpoint, I can see that this is an assembly, I can see that this is a purchase commodity, and I can see that this is a detail. So we route details to the shop, purchase commodities, we buy on purchase orders, so on and so forth. Absolutely, so here in master settings, under component types, when we ship the software and we install it, we install it with zero component types. And we sit down from a consultancy standpoint and say, what's important to your company? How do you want organized? What component types make sense? And we click the add button and then we add whatever you want. And each component type has a set of properties. So notice the detail component type has um, material finish description. The sheet metal component type has the same thing plus sheet metal because my sheet metal gauge is not important to me on a you know, bar stock item. And in purchase commodities, what's important to me is the manufacturer and manufacturer part number and the description. I don't really care what material it is or maybe what finish it is, I'm just gonna buy it, right? And I'm, these are examples, but you can 100% customize this as much as you want to fit your SOLIDWORKS environment in any capacity. If you have an in-house make part, let's say it's out of a half by six inch bar mm -hmm. stock, and you order all your raw materials by job. Yep. And now, based on your bill of material, will that generate a need for a 
what cap they sit first at? Yep, at this point we do not handle raw material because that's a very, very, very difficult thing to do. Okay. So at some point we may get to it. Um, I think if we get to it, we probably do a better job than a lot, but it's a very difficult thing to integrate with any type of certainty because nobody want nobody is satisfied to just um, nobody is satisfied to just simply tell you what material you want or buy it. You now need to do yield analysis and say how many sticks should I buy, and you have to figure out well if I cut these items out of this stick, I can buy twenty. If they cut them out of the wrong sticks, I need twenty one. It's an extraordinarily difficult thing from a math and implementation and a metric standpoint to actually execute. And the raw material discussion is a very large discussion that's not in this presentation, but it, it's a good question. Any other questions with what we showed so far? Because it gets better. And I don't want to go to better until everybody's satisfied with questions so here. This really works like if we're moving to outsourcing a lot of our. Yeah, this is all in source too. So we'll. Yep. But we're moving more and more to someone else to the cutting. Sure. Else so it, it, it'll work either way very well. We have the ability to buy raw material that's pre cut. So we don't do like in the design, there's 20 pieces of two inch tubing, and each piece is six inches long. So you need one 10 foot bar of two inch tubing. We don't do that. But if you want to go to Alro and have 10 or 20 six inch pieces of two inch tubing show up at your door, we can cut a purchase order and manage that. Okay, so we don't we don't do raw material stocked inventory or yield analysis, but we do have the ability to buy piece parts of raw material, like especially lasered parts and those type of things. We do very very well, and and I'll actually show this here in a minute. So we're going to process this assembly out, and there's a lot of details here, and I'm skipping over a lot of it just for the sake of time and demonstration. If you have a question, feel free to ask, and. Here we're going to look for, so like this detail here we're going to make internally. So I can add this to a new work order and internal to the company on this work order, the steps we're going to do to make this is maybe, I don't have it set up in my demo here, but we the first step could be buy the material externally from Alro. So I have customers that have it set up that way, it works very well. Pretending we have the material in stock, the first step could be bandsaw. Mm -hmm. And the second step could be uh, manual mill. Maybe this part's good enough for manual mill. And then I can issue that. Uh, before I do that, so that's DGF 12. We'll look at our internal manufacturing here and look at these upcoming items. So if we search for DGF 12, I think that's what it was. Uh, here, or 012. So let's do 012. Then here, when I hit save an issue, anybody in manufacturing that is um, monitoring this will instantly see this part show up. You need to go make this part, cut it on the saw. Once they're done with it on the saw, it'll show up. You now need to go make this on the mill. So we manage internal process level tracking. And again, the really clever and unique thing about this is I'm not necessitating the, the um, presence of a 2D drawing. It is very possible, and some of our customers have done this, where they'll design something, specify everything that's needed in the properties, which is all text that's saved on the database. I don't even make a 2D drawing because everything today is CNC. Uh, so maybe let's edit that, right? Instead of a manual mill, which you would need a 2D drawing, let's maybe say it's a CNC mill. So I drew it in SolidWorks, synced it into Counterpart, added a, a demand allocation to the job, procurement processed it or purchasing manufacturing processed it through counterpart into the shop floor. The shop floor now gets a request to make this component. It's a detail. Here's the description, the material. Here's the finish. The first process is cut it on a bandsaw. The second process is CNC mill. And the quantity is one for the Starbucks job here. All electronically presented, integrated with SolidWorks. Now at any time, I can click this binoculars button and I can see this record that we're looking at earlier. I can click on relationships, and I can see what the parent is. I can look at the parent, and I can see what the parent's parent is, or what the parent's other children are, and where the siblings are. 
and I can maybe see that, oh, the part I'm making is right here. It has to fit that eye bolt. So maybe I find that eye bolt, or I know the threads on the eye bolt might be big or might be small. I can manage all of this throughout the entire company with manufacturing, purchasing, inventory, without having um, any paperwork, any drawings, and all integrated inside of SolidWorks, or in integrated with SolidWorks data. Yes? So, uh, you already said that you have two steps in that process. Mm -hmm. How would we signal that step one was completed? Yep, so the state here is ready, not yet started. So from a demo standpoint, I have the ability to see all things. But if I was the bandsaw guy, I would only see bandsaw work. And when I said I was done, it would disappear off my list. And if I'm the mill guy, I would only see mill work. If it went so to the I paint guy. The yep. So you would say, I'm going to record my work. I did the quantity to one that I want. The machine ran for five minutes, and I spent 10 minutes on it. And I'm going to save this. And now it will disappear off the list, and it's now on the mill guy's list. And the mill guy can say, I stopped it. We can look at history and we can say, Andrew, at this time, at this point, did successfully complete the one on the bandsaw. Based on his time and input, it cost $9.42 to cut that. So it's all integrated costing, um, time load, uh, or boss, time load burden based. And the boss projected a timeline saying, hey, you have the raw materials, this is how much time I'm giving you to complete this step. Right now, no, because the markets and the segments and our customers are all largely based off custom design equipment. So you've never made it before. No one's ever going to estimate it. So it's kind of one of those impossible chicken and egg situations. Who is recording a due date? There's still a due date. So 100. Yep, so everything here is due date driven. So each process has a due date to meet, meet the end due date of the machine to get it assembled. But there's no projection as far as time load base on. We also have a projected time of what each process does take. Okay, yeah, this doesn't right now. But you're saying you are looking at that Yeah, it's certainly something we're interested in adding given the right situation and inputs. Yeah, it's not part of this, and I think Kenwa has probably a little bit of a different um, use case for that than a, a lot of other people. So let's look at this purchase detail here. I want to buy this from McMaster Car. Uh, well, let's find something slightly different. I want to buy this from McMaster Car. So I want to show you another level of SolidWorks integration. This eye bolt here. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, and this is an optional thing, I, as the engineer, have the ability to edit the vendors for purchasing inside of SOLIDWORKS. I can say this vendor is going to be McMaster Car, and the cost is going to be uh, $7.42 when I buy this. So now, inside of procurement, when I look at that eye bolt, which is here, it now says McMaster Car is the primary vendor. I'll make that bigger. McMaster Car is the primary vendor. If I add this to a purchase order, it is automatically going to take the demand from SolidWorks that I created through the counterpart add-in, which was quantity one for that job. It's automatically going to add it to McMaster Car with a purchase order with the appropriate due date. And if I was to save and issue it, it will automatically come up with a PO form that I can then click send and automatically add that PO form to an email in the form of a PDF with a subject line that I can just click send and email this off to Bob Jones of McMaster Car to buy my item. So if I have hundreds of items to McMaster Car on varying due dates for dozens of, of jobs from dozens of engineers of thousands of components of varying quantities, I can correlate all of that onto one single PO to McMaster Car, as long as I get it back in the right due date, send it off. And now that I've issued that PO and sent it to McMaster Car, when they come, when, when those items come in under purchase orders here, I would then be able to receive those items and say, yes, I did get quantity one of this item from the PO that I sent to McMaster Car. And 100% through this process, we're integrating the SOLIDWORKS image and the SOLIDWORKS properties and all of the associated data that we collected and integrated with SOLIDWORKS along the way. 
And I can do like partial receipts. If this was 10 line items, I could receive three and not the other seven. Or if it was one line item of quantity 10, I could receive three and say seven are still coming or back ordered. All of this is a full ERP system that integrates with the SOLIDWORKS data and moves throughout your company from an engineer to order design and build standpoint. Now, you did say that you could do multiple projects in that mm -hmm. same way? Yep. So how would you, as they came in, mm -hmm. how would you know that they were assigned to the Yep, so there's a different application for that, but uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. Specific to the purchase order standpoint, a lot of people will cut one purchase order per project per vendor, which is a very inefficient way to do it because you're paying a lot more for shipping and you're asking McMaster Car, send all of these items in one box because if you, and I'm going to pay more for it because you've sent them in multiple boxes, we're going to internally get them confused. So in counterpart, if I have 10 different projects all needing one of these eye bolts, I'll add them all to one PO along with a bunch of other items, receive them all together as one. And then when I receive them, inside of our inventory application, and we actually have a considerable upgrade from what I'm even demoing to you right now. We have a list of all of the items that are in receiving and where they need to go and what job they belong to. So I would be able to receive the item and say it goes to the Walmart job or the consumer's energy job, and here's where it goes and here's why. And the, another, another reason for doing that is because a lot of the designs and the allocations and the demands for various jobs is ever changing. Engineers at any point can say, I don't want that. I want more of that. I want a different one. And so it's not necessarily like stamp on the PO, this item is for that job, because by the time you get the item in, it might be going to a different job. So it fully supports the part stealing and the dynamic aspect of components that are being shuffled and shifted between jobs and equipment and due date and all that. Any questions with that? Um, this is the slide I was looking for. So from a counterpart desktop standpoint, we can integrate with purchase orders, integrate with work orders, and integrate with inventory. And I can kind of show that here shortly. If in procurement, we can go here. And let's look at um, 5436102. Oh, different job. Clear. So this particular item, I can pull from inventory. So I have 200 in inventory. This item I need one of for a job. So I can say, pull from inventory. Well, actually, before I do that, I'll actually pull up the inventory and kind of show you how that looks. Here in inventory, I can find that component. I have 200 here in the north warehouse and one in, sub in, air in assembly area four. So the 200 here, there's zero allocated, 200 non-allocated. In procurement, if I allocate this and say I want the quantity one to go to that job and hit save, then it'll process that out of my list. And here in inventory, if I was to refresh that search, you can see I now have one allocated and 99 not allocated. So show me the location, where it is, what, how many items are at that location, how many are allocated, how many are not allocated. And then in here, we also have like rolling cycle counts to check your inventory. And then the picking application is what I was showing earlier on what items you have to bring where, for what jobs, when, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot more details to all of these different applications. Inside of SolidWorks, we can also edit the process flow. So if we look back at that detail that we were making on the work order, from SolidWorks now, maybe I can go back at any point and say, I want to look at the process flow. And because I've already made this on the work order, it shows me how we made it. If we didn't make it, I, was, I as the engineer could add a process flow. So maybe 99% of the components, I don't really care. They're going to go to the shop floor, they're going to make it, and it's perfectly fine. Maybe this one particular component, it needs to be cut and then annealed and then machined and then ground and then hardened and then coated. I can specify that here in SOLIDWORKS and say, 
this is what I want to do in these orders of these steps for this component. And then when it gets to the machine or to the manufacturing side, the process flow that the engineer pre-populated in there is defaulted into that process of that workflow for that component. So here, so does all that make sense? Any questions on any of that? Yes. So that's cool, and that's all on the back end. And it, I was just wondering, is it is um, this able to say we have five different projects coming through the system at various stages? Yep. And at that point, our purchaser is looking at what's been released to purchase. Yep. And in those five projects, we have a common item. Yep. This will this will group all that together. So it will look at what's out there and say, hey, so you start, you look at job A and you pick that item. It will flag you and say, hey, dot B, C, D, and you also have this item. Yep. Yep. 100% by, by default automation. Um, so all of this is very cool, right? We've got inside of the assembly, we have our lovely bill of material. We can look at the order side and we can see that there's partial items that are not ordered. Now, to justify this, I have to, as a human, dig through my structure, see what is, is not on order, increment the quantities, doctor up a, um, doctor up a bill of material, hand that off, this, this diagram, right, the old way, hand that off, export that bomb, or doctor it up, or hack it all apart, send it off to somebody, say, no, buy these parts, I'm done with my design, the customer made, made up their mind, whatever it might be. It's all very clumsy and prone to mistake, because I've made them. In... I don't know why I keep closing that. In SolidWorks, the easy way to do this is I'm just going to edit my original order, and SolidWorks will automatically, counterpart inside of SolidWorks will automatically show me what is and is not on order. So I can just simply find this one and say, I want quantity one, which is what I asked for. And this one, I want quantity four, which is what I need. But again, remember the definition of an assembly. It's a sum of its children. So at this assembly level, or let's say at this assembly level, right, I got four children here that are not on order. At this assembly level, if I want the whole assembly, if you look on the left-hand side of the four children, if I just type one, quantity one, all four of these children have instantly justified at the right quantity. So it could be quantity, well, this one is quantity three, quantity one, one, and one, but it could be any number of quantities. I told counterpart I want one of this assembly. And so we have very well-defined hard rules. One of this assembly equals these children. And so it'll do all that math for you. I, I can't literally, unless my SOLIDWORKS model is wrong, I can't mess this up. If my SOLIDWORKS model is wrong, I already made the mistake anyway. If you already pre-ordered some of them, then you just did, I mean, one of those doesn't reorder. That is correct. Yep, it only does the delta difference. Wow. Okay. So I can even go to the parent here, the very, very top, and say, I want quantity one of this and it'll justify everything else to a full quantity. So if I click finish, I didn't reorder or double order any of the existing, I just added to what I had already ordered. So back in the counterpart here, looking at the assemblies, this item again shows up and I can process this. And you can see this is all grayed out because it's already processed, it's already in flight. This one, however, I can process however I wish. So reprocessing that will take all of that data, move it back over here into the Starbucks job, and somewhere in here we'll find the fixture that we didn't originally order here, but the items that we did originally order, like the side plates, are still just quantity one order. They didn't double up anything. So all of that's very cool, and all of that's an easy, and I, I don't say that lightly, but it's really an easy base case, right? Most of us could hack that out in Excel, in bombs, export, without really making many mistakes if we took our time. It wouldn't be fun, and it'd feel like we're wasting our time, because we'd all rather be designing something, but it, it is totally possible. Where I see most of the mistakes and where a lot of the value to counterpart really comes in is when we start making modifications to our design after we've pushed it to the floor. Right? I mean, how, how many people have changed something, ran out to the shop to find who was making that, to steal their print from them and give them a new print that says revision B on it with a highlighter that says make sure you do this and you know don't tell anybody I gave you the ver version A print. 
I mean, this is a real thing. It happens. Stuff changes. It's never our fault, but, you know, we have to deal with it. So in the event that that changes, I'm just going to make a few random changes here, right? Let's say maybe we want a um, second blade for our spare parts. And maybe we want two handles because we think they're going to wear out. And maybe we're not sure if this spring is going to work, so I'm just going to order two of them so I get double springage or something. I don't know. Making stuff up. So that's what you do in live demos. So if I go back to Counterpart, on the Create tab, it's an instant live bill of material update. It's going to tell me that I have a structure change. The data that I saved in the Counterpart database does not match the data that's currently in the SOLIDWORKS model. So it's telling me I, as an engineer, have changed something that's, from, that's different from the last time I told Counterpart what it was. And this is a real thing. I can design something, I can order something, and then after it's in flight, it's in production, it's being procured, I have to change that. And I now have to somehow accurately communicate what I have changed downstream so that I can get the difference. In Counterpart, it instantly notifies me. So I can willy-nilly change things without even really consciously focusing on what it is that I changed because Counterpart will keep track of it for me. So I also want to change another thing here. I'm going to get rid of something by excluding it from the build material. Whoops, not what I wanted. I'm going to get rid of the spring. That's what I wanted. By excluding it from the bill of material. And I'm going to make more foot pads. Maybe we need uh, three per side, so we have six. So if we look at this, I've made uh, a handful of changes, which would be pretty difficult to keep track of by hand and to accurately communicate downstream to everyone else in the company. I've added a new spring at the top level. I've added two more feet for a total of six of four that were already there and ordered. I have removed a spring. It's still graphically there. I just excluded it from the building material. So I removed a spring from being ordered and um, added one more handle. So I removed a quantity, increased the quanti increased a quantity, or removed an item, increased a quantity, and added an item. And I could also like decrease a quantity or something if I wanted, right? So that, that, that's a considerable amount of changes that we now have to track by hand, hack apart something, email somebody, and effectively communicate what that is by typing it all in by hand most of the time. But here in Counterpart, I can view conflicts, and this will give me a summary of what changed. This was quantity 0, is now quantity 1, so it's a new item. This was quantity 4, is now quantity 6, so it's an edited item. This was 0, is 1, it's now new. This was 1, it's now 0, it's removed. This was 0, it's now 1, it's added. You can also say show unchanged just to see the entire structure, but the summary changed is very helpful. Now I can click secondary revision, and I can process a revision into the system of my changes. Now I want to pull up a few different screens here to kind of show you how all this works, because it's a lot to keep track of, because we're doing a lot very, very quickly. So this current assembly, if we look at relationships and children, has four sub-assemblies and these two children currently stored in the counterpart database. In SOLIDWORKS, we changed a lot of that. And if we look at what's on order, so right here, uh, refresh. If we look at what's order for this uh, Starbucks job, we can see that we have a complete full quantity one on order, because I, I increased that full quantity one. And what's on order is version A-1, revision A-1. So what's on order for the job is A, and it's complete. What's in my component library record here is, um, is this bill of material. In SOLIDWORKS, I made changes. Now, I'm going to click um, Next. So I'm telling Counterpart, I want Counterpart to accept the changes I made in SOLIDWORKS. And it shows me, and if I click Finish here, it's just going to yell at me and say, you need to do something, right? So I need to tell it, this item on that job, do I want to rework it or not? Do I want to affect what's on the job here? So this is what's on the job. This is what I have on file. So do I want to affect what I have on order, yes or no? So it's like, am I just updating the SOLIDWORKS file? I don't want to do anything. I'm updating the SOLIDWORKS file and want those changes on the job. And then if I want the changes on the job, do I want to order the new components I added or not order? 
or do I want to unlink the, new, the components that I don't need or cancel? So I'm going to say order and cancel and rework. Order or cancel. And uh, update. I have some settings that say I have to put some notes there. So when I click finish, I am simultaneously, wait for it, I'm simultaneously updating my bill of material. So if I hit refresh here, see my bill of material is different. I didn't have to export anything, didn't have to type anything in. I'm also simultaneously updating my engineering order records. If I refresh here, whoops, Starbucks, notice this bill of material is different. So I've updated the record and updated the order on the job. All from a change in SOLIDWORKS that I didn't have to manually think of, keep track of, or modify by hand in any capacity. I typed in nothing by hand. It took all the data from SOLIDWORKS and seamlessly pushed it through the entire system. So if I go now back to procurement, it'll show me again. I have an assembly that has some changes I need to process. Yep. And here, uh, what's the foot pads? Let's find that quantity. Here, there. So now ask for quantity six, because I didn't process the previous four. It didn't double up on anything. It's asking for six. If I go look for this spring, um, I didn't process the spring either. And the spring doesn't exist, because I didn't process it, so I took it off my list. So even inside of the ecosystem of counterpart, if I ask purchasing to buy something, and then change my mind before purchasing to actually buy something, it just comes off their list and nobody knows and nobody cares. If they have bought it, then it goes on a different cancellation list and say purchasing and we no longer need this, you can either cancel it or still accept it and just put it in inventory. So if you email somebody a bill of material today through Excel or whatnot and say, do this, and then you change your mind, you have to communicate back to them and say, oh, don't do this, even if they have or haven't done it. In counterpart, it's very seamless and very efficient in that and that everything is working off a common data set. Any questions with any of that? Can you sort things in order by due dates? That is the automatic default way everything is sorted all of the time. In orders, in manufacturing, in inventory, in picking, in solid tasks, 100% of the system is, this is what's most important, please work on it first. Uh, project managers, salesmen, whoever is in charge of that part of the planning of the software. Yeah, purchasing guy in the back here, that's our kind of our controller for the day. He enters all our work orders internally or externally. And, you know, internally, if you move it, it bumps everything back. Externally, if you move it, it bumps your own stuff back probably too. And so we have a, a procurement group that does a really good job of that. I guess one of my questions was um, of your customers, how many are the engineers doing all of this detail? Oh, none of it. This is a total demo, right? So right. I, I'm wearing 10 different hats in what I'm doing right, right now. Right. That's what I, was, I mean, a uh, lot of people are probably getting their hands on this. Yep. Uh, Everything that we're doing in SOLIDWORKS is 100% an engineering job, right? right. Engineer's going to draw it. Engineer's going to put it in the properties. Engineer's going to put it into the system. Engineer's going to tell the system what they need on a job. Engineer's going to change their mind. Engineer's going to re-update the system. Everything we've done in SOLIDWORKS is a very engineering task. Everything outside of SOLIDWORKS, the manufacturing, the purchasing, the POs, that's usually somebody else, unless it's a small enough company where somebody's running dual duty. We may have SOLIDWORKS suits. We may have three to five peripheral players in this drug organization where the guy in the middle everything is fine, the guy in the procurement ordering and inventory control or receiving and, and it's covered your system, but it's so, I got about 10 minutes left. 
Are there any other questions or anything you want to see? Otherwise, I would like to show off the PDM integration and show you how we work with PDM and how that saves you even more time and effort. Do we have any other questions or comments? Or? Oh, um, yep, so we are SolidWorks, Microsoft, and QuickBooks partners. So I have access to the new versions of SolidWorks before they're even publicly beta available. So we have never been behind on a SolidWorks release. So as soon as SolidWorks, I mean, nobody installs SolidWorks on day one anyway, because nobody's that suicidal. But um, if you, um, whenever you are ready to go to the next version of SolidWorks, we have always been um, available or ready f to support that version before SolidWorks as releases it to the public. So we all good for quick PDM demo because it's really cool. So who's familiar with PDM from a just a high hierarchy or a peripheral standpoint? A couple of people. Sweet. So I got to find some settings here a minute. Please hold. And if I do this right, I should be able to actually pull it off before. Oh, maybe I left it on my desktop. Nope, did it. Where did I go? Here it is. So in Counterpart, we have, and I, I had them enabled, I just turned them off for the point of the demo, and just kind of want to show how this works. So we have some PDM settings. We integrate with SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard and SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional, and which means if anybody has SOLIDWORKS Professional or SOLIDWORKS Premium, you already own PDM. So I'm just going to copy and paste these values in here. Did I? Thank you very much. And hit save. Hit validated. Good. File attachment. Um, enable. Drawing. Sure. Yeah, whatever. Save. Okay. So in counterpart now, when I go to purchasing, if I was to take this detail and send it off to the laser house, this is a laser bent piece of sheet metal. Now, um, Radar, in your company, if you need to send this to the laser, I'm guessing you or somebody has to find the SOLIDWORKS file, maybe save it to AutoCAD, maybe your laser takes SOLIDWORKS files, take it, attach it to a PO somewhere, somehow, add it to an email, send it off, and that's a lot of work. You send the SOLIDWORKS file and PDF. Okay, perfect. So if you have PDM, PDFs are automatically generated, so you'd no longer have to create PDFs manually by hand. That would come for free. And if you have counterpart, you don't have to ever hand type anything in or hand make a PO. So this item shows up on your list to buy. So we say add to new PO. Before you do that, um, not what I actually wanted to do. Before you do that, let's edit the vendor and say this particular item we are going to be getting from Laser Dynamics for funsies and hit save. So now this item <clears throat> from Laser Dynamics, we're going to click Add to New PO. And we're going to create a brand new PO. And I could, I could add to a bunch of existing ones. It's just a lot cleaner and easier to do one for a demo standpoint. So we have a, a due date, a vendor, a form, an item. And I click Save an Issue. And if all my settings are right, it will, uh, hang on, just a minute. I forgot one thing, one very important thing. Uh, so these SOLIDWORKS models here, I need to put into PDM. So I'm going to quickly browse to my vault that's on my laptop here. Let's do demo files. Um, gate. I'm going to paste those files here into PDM, which will take just a minute. Should still meet my 10 minute deadline, which is good. So pretend you had these in PDM already in a PDM environment. I'm doing this live, so these were on my desktop. I'm now waiting for them to be put into my PDM environment, and which would be helpful if they're slightly smaller. But PDM is wonderful. If you're not using PDM, I know very few instances where it wouldn't be helpful. So I would seriously encourage you to look into doing so. So I'm going to now. Um, do a check-in of all these files. So I'm going to take these files and check them into the vault as PDM does. So they're now being pushed to the server, which is my laptop from a demo standpoint. This is standard PDM functionality. Nothing I've shown you so far is anything weird or unusual. 
but they're now all checked in. So with SOLIDWORKS files in the PDM system environment combined with counterpart with integration, when I click the send button, it will say, I'm gonna go to the PDM vault and try to find any files that are on your PO and add them to your email because we're nice people. So when I click finish, if I had a PDF, which I don't right now, but if I had a PDF, it would attach a PO in a PDF format. So here's a, the PO. It'll attach all of the SOLIDWORKS files and the PDF. That's way too many SOLIDWORKS files. I had an actual reference in there. But it would attach the necessary SOLIDWORKS files to make that file and a drawing for that file and a PDF for that file all into an email automatically. And I can just click send and send it to bobjones at laser.com. So with counterpart combined with PDM, combined with SOLIDWORKS integration, you would be able to make a purchase order without typing in a single thing automatically from a demand generated from SOLIDWORKS. And that and the purchase order functionality inside a counterpart has the ability to go to PDM and get all of the necessary files to make that item, attach it to your email, and instantly send it off without any data entry, any manually finding the files or anything, saving considerable time, effort, and mistakes. Yep. Yep. So um, this here, it has a bunch of external references. That's why it grabbed all of that stuff. But if I was to come here and make a revision of this and say new revision, and yes, I want to rework it on that job, update it, and finish. Then inside a counterpart, it's going to say that we have a new revision that needs to be managed. Um, here's the data gating guard. The new revision is B1. And I now need to edit the, I'm going to process this. Oh, whoops, wrong area. this. I can process that and say um, I can like update the PO or ignore it or get it in a scrap or kind of do whatever I want. So I can get the PO to send the new revision to the vendor with the new CAD data from PDM all connected together. Any questions or comments on any of that? Not the way it's currently set up, and the reason is because from a SOLIDWORKS standpoint in PDM, we go to PDM and say, PDM, give us this file and all necessary files to open it. So if it's like an assembly, I need the assembly, the assembly drawing, and all assembly children, because without the children, I can't open the assembly. Likewise, if it's a part with external references, I need the part, the assembly it's in, and all those. Otherwise, if I send an outdated part file that hasn't been rebuilt with those references in the vault, the vendor is going to make the wrong part. I suppose in the future you get add a setting, but it'd be a pretty dangerous setting. Um, alternatively, a lot of people will, in their PDM environments, automatically save off a step or an IGIS or a parasol or something like that. And then with some settings changes, we would be able to grab those files from the vault and send them to the vendor in a 3D CAD neutral, which wouldn't have any entangling alliances or external references. Well, we got two minutes. If there's no more questions or comments, I appreciate all your time. We got some literature here, business cards, can openers, bottle openers. Uh, if you have any questions for me on any of the SOLIDWORKS stuff, any of the PDM stuff, the counterpart stuff, whatever, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to help. Thank you. Thanks. Yep.